Welcome back to Campus Countdown. I'm your host, Emily Sturge, and today we'll be discussing the obesity epidemic contributing to the Army's recruiting crisis and how universities are dismissing this issue. A campus climate survey asks whether participants fear microaggressions, and the Department of Education publishes student loan repayment rules driven by income. We will be covering these three stories and more on today's episode of Campus Countdown. In our third story this week, universities dismiss the obesity epidemic that is contributing to the Army's recruiting crisis. After the Army missed its recruiting target by 25%, it is expanding the future soldier preparatory course. This is a program for recruits who fall short of the physical and academic standards to enlist. The 84-day program helps recruits outside of weight standards with weight management. This effort has been dubbed Army Fat Camp by The Economist. According to a 2020 report from the Center for Disease Control, the obesity epidemic in the United States makes many Americans unfit to serve. This army fat camp, this is a direct result of the obesity epidemic and the failure of universities, schools, and other institutions to educate youth on healthy habits. In recent years, the education sector is not prioritizing physical fitness and is choosing not to frame obesity as a problem with many voices in higher education actually celebrating overweight bodies. The institutional silence on the lifestyle choices causing obesity in nearly 40% of Americans coincides with newfound academic theories on health and fitness. Now, like trigger warnings, canceled speakers, and other movements reported by campus reform, these academic theories prioritize feelings, sometimes withholding health information to curb the risk of upsetting these patients. Instead of discussing the dangers of the obesity epidemic, professors are more worried about the dangers of fat phobia. Fat studies professors with the University of Wisconsin La Crosse criticize reports of weight gain for promoting fat phobia. One of the professors wrote a blog post criticizing those who speak out against weight gain and characterize it as dangerous saying that these people feed into a system of fat phobia that oppresses and abuses many. In our second story this week, a campus climate survey asks whether participants fear microaggressions. Here with all the details on that story is campus reform correspondent Lane Witten. The University of New Mexico recently opened a campus climate survey for staff, which asks participants whether they feel that UNM has a strong commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. The survey aims to help create a climate that fosters diversity and success, according to a description on UNM's website. The staff survey asks participants to rate the extent to which they agree with a series of statements. Participants rate whether they agree that UNM has a strong commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and if the university provides sufficient resources for the success of a diverse staff. Conversely, participants rate whether there's too much emphasis put on diversity, equity, and inclusion. One question about safety asks participants whether they have a fear of microaggressions. The survey defines racial and intersectional microaggressions as brief and commonplace daily verbal, behavioral, or environmental indignities whether intentional or unintentional. Additionally, participants in the staff campus climate survey have nine options for their gender, including I identify as and I'm figuring it out, among the other responses. This voluntary research project is being conducted by the University of New Mexico's Division of Equity and Inclusion, which will also administer a similar student survey later in the 2023 semester. Back to you, Emily. Thanks, Lane. In our top story this week, the Department of Education published regulations to transform the income-driven student loan repayment system known as IDR. The announcement to restructure IDR payments came in conjunction with the Biden administration's plan to forgive student loan debt, which campus reform previously covered. 
Although this student loan cancellation plan was announced in August 2022, publishing the regulations in the Federal Register is the first legal step to execute the plan with respect to IDR. In other words, the Biden administration is trying to create their debt cancellation program through the back door, despite courts saying that the plan is unconstitutional. In a press release, the Department of Education announced new proposed regulations to amend the IDR program for undergraduate borrowers. Forbes reports the new IDR system increases the federal poverty limit from 150% to 225% of the poverty level. According to the Department of Education, this means that any individual borrower who makes less than roughly $30,000 annually and any borrower in a family of four who makes less than about $62,400 will have a monthly payment of $0. The regulations also cut undergraduate borrowers' payments from 10% to 5% of their discretionary income. As a result, an average graduate of a four-year institution would save close to $2,000 per year at the expense of taxpayers. Additionally, approximately 85% of community college borrowers would be debt-free within 10 years, according to estimates from the Department of Education. Now it's time for the woke tweet of the week. This week's tweet says, The word field is racist. So says the at USC School of Social Work. We have decided to remove the term field to support anti-racist social work practice by replacing language that could be considered anti-black or anti-immigrant in favor of inclusive language. In a letter sent out to university staff and students, the University of Southern California School of Social Work argues that phrases such as going into the field or field work have connotations for descendants of slavery. In the letter, the university states that they will be removing the term field from curriculum in an effort to reject white supremacy. That wraps up this week's edition of Campus Countdown. To read about these stories and more, visit campusreform.org. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube, and you can also follow us over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Campus Reform. I'm Emily Sturge. Thanks for watching Campus Countdown.